Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people seem to think the world revolves around them and nobody matters. And in this episode, guys, we've got thieving neighbors, psycho Karen stalking people, Karen's threatening cops for the dumbest reasons, the lineup is wild. I hope you guys enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here, let's dive in. So I live in a very rural area, and I'm a farmer. Obviously, I have a lot of land, and there's a patch of land that borders our neighborhood road, where I have some plum trees. To be clear, this is my land, those are my trees, and there's a fence. So this morning, I decided to go harvest the plums rather early, around 7am, because of a heat wave here. This variety of plum is hugely popular in France, especially for jam, but they're hard to come by here in the south. Every year, I wait for them to ripe, and every year, a sizable portion disappears. I suspected it was someone from the neighborhood, but I never knew who. Well, this morning, I had my answer. So there I was harvesting, and I'm almost done, when I see a neighbor walking down the road towards me with a basket. The second she saw me and realized I was almost done with harvesting all the plums, she proceeds to yell at me, saying, That's so selfish of you. You're not the only one to like them, you know. You could have at least left some for the rest of us. Give me some. Now, this is a small neighborhood in a small village. She knows I own the land. She knows I'm a farmer, but she still yelled at me for harvesting my fruits on my land. I just told her I know people like them, which is why I'm making jam, and then reminded her where and when she would find the farmer's market if she wants to buy a jar or two. Then I told her that now I know it's her stealing the plums, and if they disappear next year, I will press charges for theft and trespassing. Guys, the nerve of that woman to try to steal from OP and get mad when there's nothing left to steal from them. Absolutely ridiculous. Also, OP might want to start telling his neighbors about this woman if they don't already know, because, like, the way she just casually walks up to the farm with a basket ready to harvest makes me think she might be hitting the other farms too to get what she wants. So this happened a few years ago, but it's still my favorite Karen story. I worked as an automotive technician, a mechanic, at a Honda dealership. I had mostly wonderful customers there and I love saving people money. My favorite thing about that company is we were allowed to help people fix small issues for free. Like if your headlight was out, I have a drawer full of replacement bulbs, or if your antenna fell off, I have a box full of those too. One morning, right after we had just opened for the day, a woman drove into the service center super fast, with her head out the window, already yelling at everyone. The woman is livid, screaming, y'all need to fix this crap right now. Now since I'm also a woman, I was the tech who figuratively drew the short straw and I went to handle it. I looked over the exterior of the vehicle as I approached it, like I do every car. Quick visual inspection of tires, lights, listening, even smelling, and note-taking what model, year, etc. Normally, customers will stay in their cars until they're directed to exit, but this lady jumps right out of hers when she saw me. The woman starts full throttle screaming, gesturing wildly with her hands, so erratically that we couldn't even understand her, and we thought she might be physically combative. She was screaming something about a check engine light, and a huge lawsuit, it was pure chaos. I gave her a moment to finish screaming at me, and then said to her with a huge sympathetic smile on my face, I'm here to help. Tell me more about what happened. The woman wasn't listening. She's still screaming, literally at the top of her lungs. This is a brand new car, and the check engine light is on. You'd better give me a brand new car free of charge, or you'd better call your lawyer, because all of mine are coming at you. We are going to end you. Now, if she had been nicer, I would have fixed her problem, regardless of what vehicle she drove. Honda, Chevy, Volvo, whatever in less than two minutes, for totally free. And I would have hooked her up with coffee and donuts in the lobby while I had the lot attendant run her car through the wash and vacuum. But because she was such a horrible entitled woman, all I could do was tell her, ma'am, that's not your check engine light, that's your tire pressure sensor. You need air in your tires. And this is a Honda dealership, and you drive a Hyundai. Their dealership is down the road. So yeah, the post ends right there, guys, but silly Karen, right? This is a great example of treating people with respect, and they'll take care of you. 
Like, I'll never understand why people feel the need to explode on others, thinking that will get them what they need. Like Opie said, they were ready to fix the problem for free and give her free donuts, coffee, a little quick interior and exterior detail, but Karen chose to go to war at like 7am. Well folks, my faith in humanity has fallen just a little more today. Some people have absolutely no clue on how to behave in society. This morning, I'm out picking up some breakfast for the missus and myself. She prefers Taco Bell, and I prefer Carl's Jr. because Monster Biscuits are amazing. So I pull into the Taco Bell drive-thru, and as I'm ordering, another car pulls up behind me and starts blaring their horn. I'm trying to finish up, but the woman doesn't stop, all the while she's screaming out the window that I'm a terrorist and a communist. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm just your average Caucasian American male. I have no idea why she's screaming these things. I just pull forward to the pickup window and Karen's still screaming at me. But she's given up on the honking. Maybe she annoyed herself with it, I don't know. The employee then asked if I know this person and I tell them I do not. She then hands me my bag and I leave the drive-thru with Karen following me out. So I pull up to the exit and make it look like I'm gonna turn right. But at the last second, I pull a left and now she's stuck at the stop sign waiting for her turn. I continue down the street, make a quick right into a bank parking lot and wait there for a few minutes, hoping she gave up. After about two minutes and she's nowhere to be seen, I decide that she might have gone about her crazy day. So with that, I continue down the street. A couple of blocks past the Taco Bell is my breakfast stop, the Carl's Jr. So I pull into the drive-thru. I had already ordered online for pickup and I'm asked to park while they wait for the fresh tater tots and french toast sticks. As I pull into my usual parking spot, the Karen returns. She spotted me and she's decided to peel into the parking lot and she's parked right next to me. I roll up my window as she approaches and she starts screaming at me again. She's screaming that I'm an imperial communist, that I need to go back to my own country, that I'm a terrorist, and at this point, I think she assumed I was Russian, but I don't know. The manager of the Carl's Jr. then comes out to give me my food and sees this Karen going off on me. She asks her what the problem is, and Karen rants to her the same thing she's been ranting at me the few moments she's been there. I roll down my window to get my food and tell the Karen, what in the hell are you talking about? I'm not a terrorist. I've lived in the USA all my life, and I have no idea what the hell you're on about. And then the Karen proceeds to explain herself. She says, What about all these communist stickers on your car? What's that Arab language say, huh? And then it hit me. I'm a Star Wars nut. I drive a white 2019 Chevrolet Bolt, and it greatly resembles a Stormtrooper helmet. So I have the Imperial logo on the tailgate, a The Empire Doesn't Care About Your Stick Figure Family decal with a TIE fighter blowing up some stick figures, and some Oravash, Star Wars Galactic based text that reads, Honk if you can read this. I quickly explained to her that I'm not a terrorist, this is all Star Wars stuff, including the Star Wars writing. It's not any language on this planet or in this galaxy, let me assure you. Thankfully she realized her mistake really quickly and she sputters out a quick, Oh, sorry, and then jumps back in her car and drives away. Thankfully that was the end of it, but some people, I swear, I'm not gonna have political messages on my car. That's a good way to get it vandalized. So yeah, that is freaking terrifying, guys. Like, the fact that that woman followed a random stranger to go psycho on them is baffling. And honestly, I would be calling the police on her. Like, the only reason she's so comfortable doing this crap is she's probably done it before with no repercussions. And another thing, like, let's just assume OP was a terrorist. She followed him and harassed him. Like, how did she think that was gonna end? I don't think the real ones would surrender so easy to a Karen, just saying guys. Oh, and OP does post a picture of these decals he has, and (laughs) take a look at this. Alright, so I was not the direct recipient of this one, the other coach was. But I did hear most of it and confirmed with the other coach what I heard. Thanks to spring being spring, we had to make up my kid's soccer game. The other coach and I both happened to have Thursday 5pm practice times, so we just moved practice to the game fields. The club confirmed that the field space was available and everything should be golden. Since the club uses the park for practice during the week too, they know which fields they pay to use. For context, these are 10 to 12 year olds and it's recreational soccer. 
The park we're playing at is a pretty big sports complex, with space for about 20 soccer, football, and other sports at the same time, with a large green area if needed. The game is rolling along, and we're about midway through the second half when a woman with a stroller walks over and she starts talking to the other coach. I'm far away at first, and I assume it's apparent. As I wander back, I note the body language of my fellow coach, and it's a bit disgruntled. She and I have been coaching the same age group since our kids were three, so I know enough to recognize something's up. So I move close enough to listen in, and I hear the following. The Karen says, We have the fields right now, so you need to get out of here. The coach says to her, I'm not sure what to tell you. We have maybe 15 minutes left, and I'm not just going to make the kids stop playing the game. Karen says, When this happened last time, my Frisbee League and I had to wait almost 30 minutes. We pay for the space, and it's ours, so you need to do something. Stop the game. Again, the coach tells her, It's 15 minutes, and then we'll clear out quickly. Karen goes on and says, No, we pay for this space, and you can't be here. You need to leave. The last time this happened, I was told to call the cops if it happened again, and I will if I have to. The coach replies, you want to call the cops because of a kid's soccer game that'll be done in 15 minutes? Seriously? At this point, the Karen can see that her strategy seems to be failing, and she says, you have to leave. We have ultimate frisbee every Thursday, and we pay for the fields, so get the kids off the field. The coach just stares blankly at Karen, and Karen says, what are you going to do? The coach tells her, finish the game. So at this point, stroller mom Karen walks off in a huff, and she goes over to a group of maybe five people, and she's gesturing and pointing at us. From the body language, I'm guessing that the others in her group are not as adamant about running off a bunch of kids playing soccer. The other coach asked me if I heard what she said, and I told her that I got the gist of it. Apparently, the woman started out stating, you need to leave right now or I'll have to call the cops on everyone, which I really wish I heard because I would have just laughed. I messaged our club after the game as an FYI because I didn't really want another team to deal with this again, or have someone actually call the cops and cause more issues. They let me know this morning that our soccer club actually pays for the fields we were on every day during the week, until 6pm. At the time the conversation started, it was about 5.40 or so. Yeah, I don't think there's much the cops could have done anyways, guys. And by the time they did show up, everyone would have just been gone anyway. And I just want to add that even if the cops did show up, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be super enthusiastic about running off a kid's soccer game. And guys, I just have to ask, who the heck advised her to call the cops? Like, I'm thinking maybe she harassed someone before, and they were like, well, next time this happens, call the cops on us. And Karen being Karen just took it literally. I'm a 16 year old female and my father is 46 years old. He's the breadwinner while my mom's a stay at home mom. She handles everything around the house like cooking, mopping, washing, laundry, etc. I'm the oldest and I try to help but there is only so much I can do while my dad gets home at the end of the day and literally complains about everything like how the carpet isn't clean or how the food is cold. He acts really entitled. As a result, I have to listen to a huge argument daily between him and mom. It's exhausting, but honestly, I think that my dad's in the wrong here. I tried talking to him to get him to see how his behavior is, but to no avail. So what I did was pick a day off for him and pretend to act like him. I put together an outfit that looked like a suit and put black tape over my lips to look like a mustache. At 6pm, I went inside the house and I shouted, I'm home, and then went to sit next to him in the living room and started kicking off my shoes, while complaining about the state of the house at the top of my lungs. Dad glanced at me confused, asking what I was doing. I ignored him and started yelling about the carpet being dirty, the shower not being clean, and the kids needing to be quiet and in their rooms, and so on. He kept staring while my mom and my siblings laughed. My youngest brother even pointed towards me saying, This is daddy. I then proceeded to yell about dinner and then berated my mom for not preparing it before I got home. That's when my dad stopped me and in a serious tone asked what I was doing. I then turned to him and said, What? Can't a man effing rest after working long hours? My dad got the hint because this was a common phrase he used daily. He then went quiet and avoided looking at me. I stopped the act and told him I was trying to show him what he's like every day when he comes home from work. He said nothing, he just went outside and refused to speak to me. Later, he went on about how I mocked and invalidated him, that he does work hard and me doing this was very disrespectful. 
My mom said it was funny, but she also thought I hurt my dad's feelings, and I could have gotten the message across some other way instead. So am I the a-hole? Yeah, I'd say not the a-hole, though I can see how some people might argue that. But honestly, all OP did was basically mirror dad's behavior, something that the family's gotta put up with every single day. And clearly, he doesn't like the taste of his own medicine. Like, personally guys, I think him getting quiet and not blowing up on OP is a good sign. Like, some people don't realize that how they act can affect others around them, and OP did say that talking didn't work, so hopefully, the man gets the message. But, as always, let me know what you guys think. Okay, so the last post was shared to me like two weeks ago, guys, and I did read it in another video like two weeks ago. But since there's been an update, I'm gonna share the update along with the original post because, you know, for new listeners, it won't make any sense if I just read the update by itself. So here we go. Alright, so I'm a 26-year-old female, and I live in a rented house with a single mother, who's 30 years old, and her son, who's 6. I don't mind living with her and her kid, it's fine, we kind of do our own thing. I also spend a lot of time at my boyfriend's place, or working, and our work schedules collide, so we really don't interact much. But when we do, it's fine, no issue there. I also want to start with saying that she clearly struggles financially, but I don't think it's an excuse. I don't make a lot of money either. With that said, recently, I've noticed that my food would go missing or portions would be taken from it. I assumed it was her kid, so I asked her if she could stop him from eating my food. I was calm about it, and she just said she would. It didn't really upset me when it first started. It started getting annoying when I'd get home from work and expect to have a meal's worth of leftovers in the fridge, only to see it picked through or just gone. I kept bringing it up, and she started getting annoyed with me for bringing it up, telling me to not keep food in the fridge. Just from observing them, I realized that neither of them ever eat vegetables. And judging by the food that would get picked through and the food that would be untouched, anything with green in it was avoided. My orange chicken would usually be gone, but chicken and broccoli would be untouched. So I started putting vegetables in everything. I find vegetables to be delicious, and anything green or not a potato does not get eaten. So I could mix some bell peppers into food and it would be fine. I make a big portion of vegetables pretty frequently anyways, so I started putting it in everything I eat. If I had leftover mashed potatoes, I would pour green beans in and mix it up. If I had leftover cheesy bacon fries, I would pour broccoli all over it and mix it in really well. Usually my homemade stuff has vegetables in it, but I started making sure everything did. I made a pot of mac and cheese, the kids' favorite thing, and I poured in roasted Brussels sprouts, which is actually delicious to me, and I'm eating more vegetables, so it's a win-win. She had been seemingly annoyed, but we were all home when I made a pot of mac and cheese. She was in the living room, and she saw me get out the Brussels sprouts, and she was like, what are you gonna do with that? And I poured them in. She then got mad and said I was being greedy and annoying. I just said I like Brussels sprouts, and that was it. She then said to me, we need food too. And that's when I told her to go get some, or stop buying only prepackaged things and your money will go further. I think she sees this as some big act of revenge, but I simply want to be able to eat my food. Also, I want to add that the sharing is not the issue. It's expecting to have food there, and it's not. So often, I'd be working a long day, and I would get home expecting to have a meal's worth of food, and it being all gone. Or I would wake up in a rush, had my food ready to eat in the morning, only to find it gone, so now I have to skip breakfast. If she would simply text or ask me, hey, is it okay if we eat this food item, I would know and know to make other plans. I would stop for food, or know I have to whip something up when I got home. Also, I think eating the last of someone else's food is crazy and rude. If someone makes a big pot of something and you ask for a serving, sure. But if someone made something and there's one serving left and you eat it without permission, that's evil as hell. Update. So I've been steadfast with putting vegetables in anything. I've put vegetables in things I've never even thought of. This has carried on and the mom calls me a jerk but she will not verbalize that she's eating my food. She just sees me making lasagna and adding celery and bell peppers in the layers, and she's fuming off to the side. The only thing I can't add vegetables to is snacks, like chips, or if I bake brownies or cookies. However, this is easily remedied by putting my baked goods in Tupperware and keeping them in my room. The same with chips. Now, as I've previously stated, sharing is not the issue. Recently, the kid knocked on my door asking if he could have a bag of microwave popcorn. I said yes and gave him one. All of this would be way less annoying if she just texted, hey, can I have some of this, and waited for my response before helping herself. 
I do feel bad for the mom because clearly she struggles with cooking and trying new foods. The woman is older than me and she winces at the thought of biting into anything green. And it's spreading to her kid, but that's no excuse. A few days ago, I was making taco meats out of ground beef. And like usual, she was looking without looking. She was off to the side, watching my every move, but trying to look normal. I made a dish the day before that involved sautéed mushrooms and cut up bell peppers. So when the meat was almost ready, I opened the fridge, and she freaked when she saw me holding the mushrooms. She said, My son hates mushrooms. Don't you dare put them in there. And I just poured them in the pan and mixed them along with the cut up peppers. This caused her to react in a way that I've never seen from her before. She was yelling and stomping around the kitchen while her kid just watched. I felt bad for the kid to have to see his mom like that. People were also worried about her tampering with my food. Now I don't think she's the kind of person to do that, but if she did, I would report that right away. She was flipping out, but she didn't snatch my food or knock anything over. She was opening and slamming the cabinets. It was all very silly. Then she started going off about how she was going to get the authorities involved. That's right, she was going to call the police. I just told her sure, and that she needs to relax. She seemed genuinely upset and stressed, and I told her I understand, being a single mom is hard, but she needs to use her government assistance more responsibly. Like she'll come home with cold mac and cheese, sushi, chicken from the grocery store, and other prepared foods. She'll blow her money on that. I suggested food pantries and buying ingredients that'll last a while, like potatoes. She then said I was being condescending, and I always have food to eat. She also told me to just make more of your food and set it aside for her and the kid. I do not make enough money to regularly feed two people. If every now and then she asked for some of my leftovers, sure, but this is a consistent thing that was happening. It's not as simple as giving her leftovers that I won't eat anyway. If I make a pot of something, I expect to live off that pot for the next few days. If it's eaten, then my money's messed up and I have to go shopping again and budget for more food. It wastes my time and my money. So yeah, it sucks to say this guys, but her and her son are not OP's responsibility. So yeah, a lot of you were commenting on the last video wondering about an update, so here it is. And this person comments, the kid is just the mom's excuse. It's the mom who's primarily eating her food too. Notice how the son has enough brain to ask OP for popcorn. If the son wanted some of OP's food, he would ask her. It's the mom who wants OP's food. Cooked to the mom's taste. She doesn't eat greens either. So yeah, that's r slash entitled people, guys. If you enjoyed the episode today, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here, lady, where you know Karens are going crazy, mistaking others for employees, and getting tossed in jail. If you missed the last episode, Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.